Uh, update folks on what the uh, Janelle uh, Grant lawsuit update is going on. Yeah, so the, the, the lawsuit is on hold. What happened is is the uh, the government, the Southern District of New York, which is interesting to me um, just because of venue, um, they are investigating Vince McMahon and investigating the things in some of the things in the lawsuit. And for reasons having to do with discovery and stuff, they pretty much ask that everything that they do in the lawsuit be put on hold so they can concentrate on the investigation. And it's, 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 a uh, it's not an unusual procedure from what I understand, having talked to a lot of people, um, Eric Anderson actually kind of just describes it in the observer, you know, who's an attorney friend of ours. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's just one of those things. So it's probably six months and then it will go back. But right now the, um, I mean, it's not good news for Vince McMahon because for them to do this, that means that they're very seriously looking at him. So yeah, it's, um, you know, it's not a guarantee he's going to get indicted or anything like that. I mean, you just have to look at it like it's a process, but for the people who thought that there's no chance he was going to get indicted, that's wrong because if there was no chance, this would not happen. Mm -hmm. So they are, but they are absolutely looking into him. The Southern District of New York is interesting to me because so much of this is venue and, and Connecticut would be the venue of, of this stuff, especially with Janelle Grant. It was, it was all Connecticut. It wasn't Southern District of New York. Um, so, cause I remember in the, in Vince's trial, you know, one of the key things, you know, which was the distribution to Hulk, the distribution of steroids to Hulk Hogan. They could not prove that anything happened. This, the, that was in the Eastern District in New York on Long Island. They could not prove, um, or they didn't even have a case that Vince distributed to Hogan within that district. They could have put her in Connecticut. They could have made a case for Connecticut, but Connecticut didn't, you know, for whatever reasons, Connecticut didn't feel like following up on it, and it never went anywhere. I mean, it was not a. It was never ruled that he never did it. He was never acquitted of it. It was that they did not have the correct venue. Um, for that. And that's why it's like the Southern District of New York is interesting to me only because I don't know that the venue aspect of it, but, but they must. Um, I know some people are going like, you know, this district has a great conviction rate and they do. But I also remember the Eastern District when Vince was on trial in 94, they had a great conviction rate. And, you know, I saw the trial and I, you know, probably one of the experts on that trial now. Um, and, you know, I, when it was over, it was like, I, I, I just thought it was such a weak case, you know, to go as far as it did. Um, there was a case, there was a case to get to here, but there was not a case to get to here, which is the conviction. And that's mm -hmm. why, like, when I watched that trial, it was like, they had a lot of evidence of, of that Vince was not a good guy. And they had a lot of evidence that, that, that steroids were in WWE, of course, because they were all over the place, but they did not have the evidence of the conspiracy. They almost did, but almost almost isn't a conviction. And so to me, I was, you know, um, that's why, again, like, you know, everything's a process, um, you know, but I mean, as far as like the ruling on the, um, uh, what's it called? The ruling on the um, um, arbitration thing, um, you know, that's on hold now. I mean, nothing's going to happen for six months when it comes to that, whether it's going to be, have to go to arbitration. Um, when this investigation is over, you know, I mean, it, whether, you know, if they decide to press charges, if they have evidence, um, you know, it's immaterial at that point what's going to happen other than Janelle Grant, you know, it, it strengthens her case if they have something. If they don't have anything, then it doesn't strengthen her case. Um, but that, you know, that ruling, which was going to be the next step, I mean, that's that's on hold for six months. And uh, news, um, you know, like these back and forth things that like Vince's side and her side put out, um, you know, that's also on hold for six months. We're not going to get any information on this story of, of any great note um, until either this investigation is over or one day we wake up and there's an announcement and there's charges. So that's that's the story. Six months takes us right to the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder for folks watching this live. This is a free preview. We did not put this one behind the video paywall. We put this one on the free YouTube channel. So if this is a little bit of a, a, a preview to what Dave and I do every Friday. So if you like what you see, uh, video.f4wonline.com is how you become a, a live subscriber. And folks who are listening, if you want to check out the, uh, the video version, it is on the free YouTube channel as well. All right.
let's talk about the um i guess before the aw tv right stuff that you wrote about what's the deal with all these contracts coming up for wwe i just look there's there's like 200 people um you know maybe 100 or so on their main roster um you know that means 20 a year so we're just hearing more about it but um yeah usually they were more proactive about it um as far as getting people signed further ahead of time um especially a few years ago when um i think that uh you know a lot of people saw AEW as a better place to be now it's not they don't i, I don't think people there see it as much so they're not as proactive about it. but just yeah i mean contracts are coming due and uh you know i mean you know um i know tony khan's still interested in signing people um you know how many and whatever is going to depend on when when they get that deal signed you know if they get the deal signed at a good number um, there will be more aggressive signing of talent that's inherent. That's what's going to happen. If it's not as good a number, the there will be less aggressive when it comes to signing WWE talent. And, you know, you also have to, um, there's so many things when, if you're AEW and you're signing WWE talent, because, you know, a lot of them, you know, were, were mistakes in hindsight, you know, mm -hmm. people who, who he spent a lot, a lot of money on that didn't get a lot of value. And then others were, were fantastic. Um, you know, fantastic, you know, uh, for the company. That's how so, it is in all sports, though. It's, well, yeah, it's exactly like that. Yeah. yeah. You, don't, you don't know. You don't know the attitude when you change teams. Um, you know, the, that that's one of the things now is that, that the perception in WWE is that, hey, you know, it's not a bad place to work. The money's good. The schedule's not as hard as it used to be. Um, and the creative is not as bad as it used to be. Um, you know, whereas, you know, before when all those things were different, AEW was fresh and guys were having a ball there. And, um, you know, there was, uh, there was more fear of people going. And also when the gap was closer, the last thing you wanted was people going right now, obviously the gap is very, very big there. There's no, there's nothing that AEW can do where they're going to be WWE ratings. And that wasn't the case a couple of years ago. So they're, you know, the impetus of, of signing people long before they expire and the idea, you know, plus Cody Rhodes is there and stuff. Um, you know, that makes a big difference too. Um, you know, guys go the other way and have been more successful going the other way. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the dynamic is always changing, but I don't, they're not as, I, I don't think they're as pressed to sign people a year before their deal is up. Like they probably were two years ago. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? Wrestlingobserver.com. You have a commute. Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.